Dear viewers, welcome to the show. Today we focus our discussion on MCC, uh, which by far is one of Nepal's most politically and publicly debated issue and which of course continues to evoke a sort of uh, a polarized debate not only in the political circles, but which has tripled, trickled down to the public sphere as well. Now, if you look at the bigger picture, uh, a quick pan, and then you can easily see there are highly polarized uh, thoughts over the entire uh, human cry of uh, the MCC Compact, which is a grant assistance of the United States. And if uh, agreed or if ratified, would be Nepal's uh, largest a grant assistance uh, signed with any country in the world so far. Now, talking about the debate, the two school of thoughts exist, basically. One, which thinks the MCC assist, uh, grant assistance is an invaluable investment to Nepal's overall development. And then there is the other school of thought, which views it as United States uh, expression of geopolitical interest uh, coming to the region in some form or the other. Now, today in today's show, we try to garner some expert views and look at the legality of the matter and see uh, the substance in the claims made by these two sides. And we are pleased to introduce uh, to you and welcome to the studios, senior advocate who is an expert in international uh, commercial law, uh, a senior advocate himself uh, to the show. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Professor Dr. Gandhi Pandit. Thank you, Shivani ji. Right, so it's a hot topic that we are discussing uh, today and I'm sure we have a lot to uh, say and share herein and we are very much keen uh, towards uh, g getting from you the legalities of the claims that is being made uh, on the particular issue. Now, sure. Dr. Pandit, uh, seven years of uh, uh, foreign investment uh, or foreign aid supported development is what Nepal is running on at the moment. Yes. Uh, what what makes MCC unique? I think it, uh, the MCC is something unique in the sense that it is a grant given to Nepal by the government, U.S. government, in the form of a uh, grant for the economic development and a reduction of poverty. And uh, that's one uniqueness. And second one is that the amount that uh, this grant, we, uh, f through this grant, we are receiving $500 million in one, one go, in one chunk, is a pretty big amount that Nepal has ever received as a grant. Maybe that's, that's for that reason. Third is that it is also so unique that this agreement clearly, or this grant clearly want to request government of Nepal that the project which is being implemented through these grants had to complete with five years, within five years period. In what area? Two area. One, road expansion and uh, upgradation and to transmission line, electricity transmission line project. Because we need to, any electricity that has been produced, one part of the country had to be transferred to other part of the country for which we have a lack of transmission line. That's why in these two areas, the, the grant money is being used. That's why it is so unique on that. Right. Could you uh, kindly share, um, so shed some light on the legal framework uh, of this entire project? Yeah. This is uh, an agreement concluded between two sovereign nations. Sovereign means Nepal as well as India, uh, sorry, USA. And that's why in this agreement, Nepal and USA has an equal fit, footing. Mm -hmm. It says that this agreement is going to be governed by international law. Because since we both are sovereign nations, neither Nepal wants to have this American law applicable here, nor American wants to have applied the Nepali law in here. So since the they agree and they said, let's apply international law, which is higher law than any national law, right? Second, the unique, or the second point that the legal uh, parameter is that th this agreement has focused that the money should be used in developmental aspect. And the most of the issue that 
has come in market saying that the money, the money that government, uh, U.S. government is giving as grant is for the purpose of bringing military or establishing military uh, uh, camp. And which was the rumor in market is 100% wrong. That's not true. In fact, Article 27 of the uh, compact uh, MCC agreement clearly stipulated that the money should not, should not be used in military activities. Uh, military or semi-military activities or police activities are forming, uh, creating a camp or something, that if that happens, U.S. government has a right to terminate this agreement and uh, take their money back. They do not want to allow that money to be used in military activities. It's clearly stipulated. I'm talking here, not my views. I'm talking what is written in this agreement that I have in front of me. This is the compact agreement. I have gone through each and Every, every clauses of this agreement. Surely you've gone through yeah. that. So and I'm very clear, pretty clear on that, what it means to. Right, right. Surely you've gone through <laughs> that thoroughly. But you know, because the confusion and the complexity of the confusion that has been created at the moment is surely because you just look around or you just listen around and everybody has their own story to tell. Everybody has their own claims to make. Mm. Uh, since you're also an expert in international commerce, commercial, right? law. commercial law, oh. that's what I understand. What is it? Is, is something like this uh, to be to have an international governance? Is, is it is it a common thing to happen in an inter in international spheres? Yes, uh, you have brightly brought me into this. This agreement that we have signed with the U.S. government is prepared by U.S. government. Though it doesn't mean that even though they drafted this agreement, but it, the agreement is negotiated. While drafting this agreement from U.S. government, they did not drafted this law only for the sake of the uh, the grant. Because MCC is a fund created by the US government uh, to help underdeveloped country to enhance their economic uh, growth and uh, elevate property, elevation, property, poverty elevation. For that, there are many other countries that are seeking the same kind of grant from US. And we are one of the country which has applied this grant is unique in the sense that it is not given by us as U.S. said. Mm -hmm. The U.S. government said that we have the money. Can you, do you take in this area? Then we'll say yes, we'll take it. This is not that kind of grant. This is the grant is created and all the underdeveloped and developing countries are allowed to apply for this. And we are one of the countries we applied and we are, we are selected for that. Right. So that's why this is the... Uh, so that the provision in here is not only uh, drafted focusing into the condition, it is drafted looking at all other countries. So that in these are international practices for that are incorporated in For any aspirant nation can apply to that yes, and be yeah. eligible. I think there were, yes. care, I mean, the criteria is Yeah, like only some people. area, some part in particular country has a particular specific unique situation. They will make some changes or amendment. Mostly 80% of the clauses is uh, of international standard means it is a very generic clauses mm -hmm. that apply and in any other country if US signs this kind of agreement, the same kind of clauses are here. Mm -hmm. I will tell you the, the clauses has very similar provision with uh, Mongolia that there, Indonesia, Ghana, other country that US has signed the similar type of provision is there. Mm -hmm. Right. But now looking from Nepal's side and looking at all the hula balu that's been created around, right, mm -hmm. creating to public confusion, uh, purely, I mean, clearly uh, this, this compact is new to Nepal at many levels, right? If I could uh, take out a few points, first and foremost, its design and the complex structure with which it comes, right? Uh, secondly, uh, the, the need for a bilateral agreement with a third country, which certainly is negligible now because with or without um, MCC, it's going already going ahead. And the third thing is the inclusion of a small investment in strategic roads, as you also said, right, in the project vicinity. And then the, it is requiring an act of parliament. I think these four clauses have been uh, food for or food or fuel to spark all this skepticism oh. around, right? What's your take? What's your take as a legal practitioner? Let me let me tell you. You have used the word investment. I want to make it clear. This is not an investment. When you talk about investment, then it requires a return. 
in Nepal, when in, uh, bringing that money in Nepal or granting by USA, they are not expecting anything return. What they are expecting by bringing that money in Nepal and using for development aspects, they expect that the police development growth activity will take place as well as it will uh, eliminate the poverty in Nepal. So that it also help in uh, uh, the electricity development or electricity transmission of electricity from Nepal to India and other countries that is going to help and which will ultimately help Nepal to make good income out of selling the electricity. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So that it is not, it's not something is very, this uh, grant agreement is very similar to World Bank and ADB. In fact, I tell you the clauses stipulated in the World Bank agreement and ADB grant agreement, they are more stronger than this one. It is right. more liberal than the World Bank ADB. And that's why this is acceptable to Nepal. From my perspective, if you have this kind of clauses, not only, I'm not here supporting today to USA or MCC. I'm not supporting them. I'm just saying that the money grant, the agreement that has been signed to receive this grant is so good. With these clauses, any country, if they, they, they grant us any money, we have to take it. Because but please share with I know, us. I'll tell you one thing. Right. You have come to the parliament. Right. Whether this had to right. go to the parliament. Exactly. That is where Initial the stage, goes. the question arises whether this compact agreement had to be submitted in par parliament or whether parliament approval is necessary or not, legal point of view. In the past, there are many other agreements that has been signed between Nepal and other country to receive the grant, none of them have ever been submitted in parliament. Mm -hmm. sure. This is the first time, but it is so unique that even in this agreement, MCC 2017 agreement, there is no clauses or provision saying that it had to be submitted in parliament. It is because 2000, I will say Nepali date, or law ministry has written a letter to government, Ministry of Finance saying that, in order to receive this money, you have to submit this agreement to the parliament and get approval. Because of that reason, we have submitted it to parliament. But why right. did they even feel the need to do so? Was it right? Okay. Well, why would a foreign assistance, uh, okay. you know, need a, a parliament endorsement? Oh. And if you look back, even during this course of all this confusion, even in the period of four years or so when MCC's debate started, there have been many big, uh, you know, assistance programs uh, agreement signed with other business, I mean, development partners. Yeah. Now, now, why these borrowing were not subject to the same level of transparency? Okay. Why not? It's very pertinent question you are raising. I'm also so surprised. Why? Why would they ask? They are asking, or the Ministry of Law and Justice has recommended that this uh, agreement be submitted in par Parliament for approval or their consent. In fact, I will tell you one thing: none of other agreement ever has been put forward. As per the law, but there are two kind of agreement had to be ever, had to submit it in the Parliament for approval. One, a, 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 an agreement which relate with. Constitution of Nepal, Article 279 of Constitution of Nepal, which says any agreement related to defense, any agreement related to border, uh, and any uh, uh, agreement related to the natural resources division, mm -hmm. in that kind of agreement, you have to have a two-third majority approval from parliament. That kind of agreement had to be submitted. Other uh, agreement is that any agreement that has been signed between Nepal and India, Oh, sorry, Nepal and other country, in which it is stipulated that the agreement, in order to be applicable, the agreement had to be approved by, or the, the treaty had to be approved by parliament. If that kind of provision is stipulated, only these two type of agreement so which, should which be. Which of these provisions this, 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 this agreement does not fall in this both category. Okay. And this agreement fall on the other ordinary agreement in which the government of Nepal cabinet has a right to approve the agreement and to implement it. So that this agreement fall on that general category agreement. But somehow, I will tell you one thing, Sebanji, if you will be surprised to hear, mm -hmm. this is the agreement that we have signed in 2017 between US government and Nepali government, right? There was another agreement mm -hmm. in 2016, June, okay. July 2016, uh, agreement was signed between government of Nepal and MCC. This agreement is for $10 million. 
So this is in addition to the five yeah, yeah, before that, dollars. it is 2017, 2000. Before this, is uh, it part of minutes? this project? No, it separate. Separate. You know, it is a part in the sense that while bringing 500 million, the American government wanted to, in which area they want Nepal wants to invest that money. In order to find out that, we did a DPA detailed project uh, study, uh, dynastic growth dynamic test, which for that it took, it cost one ten million dollar. For that money also we got grant from Nepal, U.S. government from the MCC. The provision 81, section 81 of this agreement has said that the applicable law for this agreement is New York State law, means U.S. law will be applicable. And we have accepted this agreement and nobody has ever raised any question. In fact, this is the agreement that we have signed in 2000 is against the sovereignty of Nepal, not this agreement. In this agreement, the applicable law is international law. And none of the nationalist people who had taken this money, who had signed the agreement, never ever raised any questions. And many of the clauses that had been incorporated in 2017 agreement, its similar provision is out here. And if you look into that provision, why they have never objected to the agreement? If they are not objecting this ag agreement of 2016, in which the applicable law is U.S. law, and if that, if you look from the national perspective and sovereignty, we have already lost our sovereignty. I think we all Nepal has to read. If we want to re regain our nationality, one billion rupees means our every person had to pay three. Uh, 300 rupees per all, then we all Nepal had to collect this money and return it, or you accept it. So that you know, most of fake nationality issue and de derailing this issue is not good. The, the, the political parties should be very aware that we are, this is the money coming for the development of Nepal, and we should not mislead innocent people. Exactly. Now, as we move forward, towards uh, wrapping up this edition. Uh -huh. uh, let's quickly look into, uh, this is the time when Nepal is, uh, I mean, uh, looking, I mean, we have this deadline to meet, 28th yeah. of February, yes. where Nepal has to either say yes or no from the parliament, right? Yes. Just, just to take an instant, should this be ratified by the parliament, which law will be governing the project? How okay. should the uh, okay. layman first understand of all, this? First right. of all, I'll tell you, this, well, uh, Agreement has already been submitted by go previous government, only government, for the approval, uh, consent of the parliament, right? The very surprising thing that current uh, house of the chairman of the house has prevented it from submitting in the parliament discussion, right? Which is against the constitution. It had to go through and it had to approve. And as you said, that by 28 February, we have to make some decision. Otherwise, the money will be, America may decline to give this money. Now, once this agreement is approved, the law applicable for this would be uh, international law. Now, there is one provision in that I have to make some clarity. In this agreement, there is a 7.1 a clause say that if the provision of this agreement in, is in conflict with the Nep prevailing Nepali law, the clauses will prevail. The clause of uh, or, uh, of this agreement will be prevail over the Nepali law. It seems that we our law is, is lower and this agreement high. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. In fact, even this written as per the Con Geneva so, uh, the, the, the law of treaty Vienna Convention on law of treaty 1969 clearly says that if there is a conflict between agreement, if two countries signs an agreement. And the clauses of that agreement is in conflict with their prospective country, then the, each country cannot take advantage that my, the treaty's clauses is in conflict or law, so we do not want to uh, honor the treaty, uh, we want to follow the law. They cannot say that. That's the law. Be, besides, say that US, uh, com, uh, the MCC has already clearly said a letter that this compact will be below the constitution of Nepal. So we right. don't have to worry about that. Right. Constitution will be higher than the, this right. Right. compact. Because we clearly understand MCC is not being looked at just as an assistance program. The, st the ones who are uh, sharing their skepticism on this, right? This is being looked at at a, at a bigger picture. 
uh, given the geopolitical machination and, 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 and whatever, right? So in this light, uh, should, uh, should a, a situation of conflict arise, how do you think would be, what do you think uh, would be uh, the, uh, what do you call, consequences or challenges for Nepal in terms of terminated, the clauses or conditions no, of termination? I, I do not agree that by taking this money, there will be a, a military conflict will create here or uh, coming that money that we are going to uh, involve in Indo-Pacific strategy. That's not going to happen because Article 27 of this agreement, 2017 compared, clearly prevented that money to be used for military activities. If you are not using this grant money for military activities, how Indo-Pacific activity will, uh, will be applicable or will be effective out here? Because there will be no military. Okay, actually, forget about that. Let's say, even if it has allowed that American military to be coming into Nepal, it will allow to come to Nepal, just assume, how would American uh, military force will come in here? Either they have to go come by land, in which case neither India nor China will allow the uh, American uh, uh, force to come in here. If they have to fly, then they have to fly either the air space of India or air space of China. Both countries, they will not go, gonna allow that. Then no, even if we have agreed for Indo-Pacific strategy, that will not be effective out here. There is no way. All of that having said so, what I said that the agreement itself clearly said that there is no questions. Well, I will tell you last, let me see, the kind of on, uh, the grant we are getting with this agreement, what I say that it is for the national interest, we should not reject this agreement. In fact, after taking this money, we should also go to China. Say, sir, we have already received 500 million from third country, America. You are our neighbor. Please help us create a railway line developed from uh, Lhasa to Nepal. We need, we are a poor country. Can you help us? We will ask China. Immediately, we will also go to the India. Sir, you are our close neighbor. So we also need, we need a fast track road to be built. It's very costly. Can you help right, us right. that? Having right. APU, we, say we have right. to use the, the diplomacy in that way. We should not oppose China or we should not oppose India. Both are our country. Exactly. For this money, we should not uh, misguide our national uh, uh, policy with this country. Right. Um, not everyone is as optimistic as you. And you can see that in course of all this hue and cry, uh, people are now starting to raise uh, questions over Nepal's uh, potential, especially in handling foreign affairs and foreign assistance and then again recently just yesterday there have been questions raised on Nepal's diplomacy yeah. uh, for a lot of many events that time wouldn't permit us to yes. discuss that here so one last question yeah, please. Nepal is a new democracy moving ahead I'm sure that we're going to face a lot of inconveniences of democracy that would come along the pros and cons you know a package uh, a part and parcel of everything how would Nepal how do you think Nepal I mean who, who do you think would be the neutral, credible and information center in situations like this? No, I think uh, the, the, now there is a lot of one thing that in this MCC issue of people has different views. There is a question of credibility and where to get the right information. That's what you're saying. But having said so, what I'm I'm of the opening in that. One part, every at the end of the, the tunnel or the end of there is a light, right? At the end of the tunnel, there is a light. So what we, we have to take this positively. People are raising their concern, voice. It's good in the sense that now in future, any grant or any loan you are taking, make sure that it is for national interest. So the kind of concern and awareness is to be appreciated. But that doesn't mean that if some grant or money are very good for the country, in the sake of national interest, giving false information, misleading the people. If you stop taking this kind of money, Nepal is, is a very poor country. From our own internal resources, tax, what you say, the custom, even we are not being able to pay the government salary and security. For development, we need either grant or loan. Loan, we have taken a lot of loan. We are paying the same test and the principle of the loan, heavily our economy is burdened. The only way to help this country to grow is taking grant. When you are taking grant of this type and you are making such a huge advantage for nothing, 
tomorrow it is going to give a very negative impact to other donor agency people will get so nepal you want to give money they will blame you for something we asked for this agreement money we applied for that now after five years of signing of the agreement they said you are trying to uh, use your influence in nepal you are trying to uh, undermine our national sovereignty that kind of blame if you do we are losing our credibility Thank against you. the nepali people uh, american people how they are looking at us they will be surprised that Europeans are also looking at us. So Nepal is not a credible country. Your one leader say one thing in front of the government, other thing in front of the people. Like Parsantaji has brought one letter and Sherbadji has signed the letter. The letter means that they also want this MCC agreement to be signed. So I think, having said so, I'm saying that let's not blame to each other. Don't, don't play the blame game. Let's come together. Let's make this country grow. And this is the... Uh, agreement, uh, money should come. Take even in future, we should be. Thank you, Dr. Bandu. Thank you so much for your incredible thoughts and sharing your expert views. Thank you. One thank more you. Time. Have, thank you. Thank you very much. Right, dear viewers, that's it from NTV Chat for this week. We talked on NC MCC as Nepal looks forward to 28 February's deadline. That's it from the show. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>